Hello world, I'm Nick, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at how you can call Python scripts from C Sharp using python.net. Before we get into the video, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you haven't subscribed already, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like the video. It helps me bring you so much more .NET content. It's exciting to do something that involves a different programming language today, and so let's get into calling Python scripts from C Sharp. So hopefully this will be quite a straightforward video. Essentially, I'm going to take a very, very basic Python script. I'm going to show you how it works now, and then I'm going to go into a C Sharp console application. I'm going to call the uh, functions that we've got defined in our Python script. So this Python script here is called mypythonscript.py, uh, and I'm assuming that you have a basic understanding of Python, but if you know how to write C Sharp, you'll have no problem with Python, in my opinion. So just to go through this script, at the top, we've got an import statement, which is the equivalent of our using statement in C Sharp. And we're saying that we're importing the library OS. And if we hover over that, we can see all the background information about that library. Basically for this, it's going to allow us to speak to the local operating system. So in one of these examples, I'm uh, getting the current directory. So current working directory, CWD, and I'm going to output that as part of the function. Uh, but before that, I've got a very simple uh, function that returns a string. So def being defined name of the function, no parameters in here. I'm simply returning hello world, I'm a Python script. And then underneath that, I've got another function, but this time we're taking a parameter. So in Python, we don't have to specify the data type. Uh, so I've just got message here. Then we'll use the os.getcwd function from the os library and we'll put the result of that into directory and then we'll return a string which is a concatenation of message so the message that was passed in in that argument plus the directory that we found using the os function here so we're not too concerned about running this on its own i just basically wanted to have some python code that we could uh, have as an example what we want to do next is use python.net, an open source library, to call this Python script from a console application. So first of all, before we get into writing the code, let's talk about python.net as a library. Uh, so in terms of interoperability between .NET and Python, it's not a new thing. It's been around for some time, uh, but it's not exactly easy to do. There are several libraries that you can use for this. Uh, initially, uh, one of the libraries that I started to work with was called Iron Python. You can check that out on GitHub. Uh, but I landed on python.net, especially for this example, because it just seemed a little bit more simple in terms of calling into a Python script. There are some some limitations that I found with Iron Python. Um, I found it quite difficult to uh, use anything that wasn't part of the standard library. So Python has a set of libraries which are not necessarily built in, but they're sort of grouped together, the most common libraries that you would use. Outside of using those dependencies, it got a little bit more difficult for me to, to use Iron Python, but they do provide a NuGet package which bundles in all the standard library stuff. And for most Python projects, that's probably okay. I did also, however, find that Iron Python didn't allow me to use my latest Python version, and that was a bit of a problem for me as well. So uh, as an alternative, I've looked at python.net, which I've not used for quite a long time, and that has allowed me to use the latest Python version on my machine. So as you can see here on the documentation, it talks about how python.net is uh, a seamless integration with .NET Framework, .NET Core, Mono, uh, and it's cross-platform between Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And the key thing here is it allows you to um, write Python with any components written in a language which targets the CLR or the common language runtime, which is the runtime for .NET. So we're talking C Sharp, VB.NET, F Sharp, and here it's saying you can do it from C++ and the CLI, which I've not tried, but great, good support. And you can see here as well that Python.NET is compatible uh, with Python at the time of this video, 3.7 to 3.11, which I think 3.11 is the latest version right now. I might be wrong, but that's the version that I've got my machine anyway. And that was uh, the version that was not compatible with, I with Iron Python at the time. You can also check out the GitHub as well. Uh, and there's some really good examples here of how you can call .NET code from Python, which is something that we're not going to cover in this video. I might do a different video on this, doing the opposite of what I'm doing now, but we're going to stay in the world of C Sharp, call the Python code from .NET. And also the project is supported by the .NET Foundation, so you can you know, be relatively confident that it's got some decent support. 
Okay, so installing the library, it's as simple as using the NuGet package manager. Uh, I already have it installed on this console app. If I just head over to uh, manage NuGet packages for solution, click installed, you can see I do have Iron Python, so I was messing around with that uh, and came up against some roadblocks, but Python Net is the one you want to look for. So if you go into browse and type Python Net, you'll find the first result is the library we're looking for. And at the time of this video, it's at 3.0.1. So I've created a console app without the um, original main uh, entry point, without the old template for .NET. So it's a, just a blank class. And so for this at the top, I can start putting in my dependencies. So we've installed Python Net uh, or Python.net. And I actually want to use um, Python dot runtime. So this is the namespace from that library that I want to use. The first thing I'm going to do is create a C sharp method, which we're going to use uh, as part of our entry point to actually read the Python script and then execute specific functions from that script. So because I'm in a console app, I'm going to do static void, and then I'm going to make a method called run script. And this is going to take a parameter of script name. So string script name. Now you might be wondering why I didn't put uh, file path. For this, at the moment, I've not been able to find a way to read the script if it's in a different location to the application, uh, the .NET application. Uh, so there may be people out there who can help me with this. Uh, but I've found that actually python.net just looks in the local directory for the name of the file that you've mentioned. So if you've got a script called myscript.py, then you'll just say use myscript and python.net will look in this directory. Is there a script called myscript? And it goes from there. So if there is a way to target a particular path, that would be great. Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to find out. But for the meantime, that's the reason that I've got mypythonscript.py in the same directory as my application. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to tell python.net the location of my Python DLL. So this is the actual dynamic link library, the library for Python itself. So it, actually, it has to actually target your installation of Python on your machine, and then it will use that to execute the code. So I can use runtime, which is that python.runtime namespace that I added at the top of the console app, and I can say dot Python DLL, and I can set this to a file path, and well, a, a direct file path for the DLL that holds my Python version. So you would need to look on your machine for where Python is installed. On my machine, and I think this is the default, it's in app data, local programs, Python, Python 311, uh, and then the DLL that I want to target is Python 311.dll. So depending on the version that you're using, it might be a slightly different name, it might have different numbers, but for me, this is the uh, version that I want to target. So I'm gonna copy the path to that, and then I'm gonna set an empty string, I'm just gonna drop that in. Actually, it might be better if I don't set a string because Visual Studio will do it for me. There we go. Um, this just needs to be escaped. So now we've set the Python DLL to the location on my local machine for that DLL. Once we've set that location, we need to tell python.net to initialize the Python engine. So I can target Python engine. And this is again part of that python.runtime namespace. Uh, and that has an initialize method. Call that and that gets us going with our instance of Python. Then I want to use something called the GIL. GIL stands for Python Global Interpreter Lock. So let's explain very briefly what that is and why we're using it. You can see here on this uh, article from Real Python, Python Global Interpreter Lock, or GIL, is a mutex or a lock that allows only one thread to hold the control of the Python interpreter. So we have these locks or mutexes in C Sharp as well. But what we're doing with this is saying, I want to target this code and I want to be the only thread that's able to actually execute this code. So we're preventing those race conditions from anything else that might be running. I don't know if this is actually required for python.net. There may be other ways of invoking the code without the GIL. This was the best example that I could find when I was researching and it's been working for me. So I'm using that GIL to target my script. To use the GIL, we wrap it in a using statement. So I can say using hi, again, part of that python.runtime namespace, dot GIL and that will give us our instance of the GIL. This means now that anything that runs in this block will be part of our actual Python execution. The next thing we want to do is to actually target our script 
and import it. So I'm going to create a variable called Python script. I'm going to set that equal to pi dot import and then I'll pass in the name of my script. Remember, I'm not passing in a path. I'm assuming that the script is in the same directory as this application, just passing the name, which in my case is my Python script. I don't need to put dot pi on the end of this. That imports our script into Python script. Now we can actually target the script and actually execute a specific function within that script. So for this, I can use Python script that I've just imported and go dot and choose invoke method. So I want to invoke a specific method. And then I just give the name of that method to so this in my Python script. The one we want to do is say hello. So I'll just say string, say hello. And obviously I want to get the result of that. So I'll say var result equals Python script dot invoke method and then the name of our method. Let's breakpoint this console app so that we can see how it runs and then I'm going to run it. Now nothing happened because I forgot to actually call the method as part of the main entry point for the console app. Silly boy. So let's do that. So when we actually start our application, we're just going to call run script and the name is my actually I've duplicated some work here. I don't actually need to hard code this. I just need to set this to script name. Try that again. There we go. So we've hit our breakpoint and we've imported our Python script. The result is hello world. I'm a Python script. And if we check the script itself, you can see that is the expected output. So in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ish lines, we've been able to instantiate an instance of Python with our local install, target a script, call one of the methods on that script. And it ran pretty quick. There's not a massive amount of overhead with this. It seems to run pretty well. So let's look at our second function we've called test. Now this is a bit different in the sense that it's expecting a parameter. So how do we actually pass the parameter from C sharp to Python? Well, let's take a look. If we go back to our invoke method, we can see if we put a comma after the first parameter, we actually get some more options. There's several overloads on this, we've got an array of what we call pi object. So we could use this to pass through various different objects to our script. In our case, we want to pass a string. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this to the correct name for our new function. So we're going to be calling test. And then I'm going to set up our pi object, which is going to be that string message. So I'll say var message new. I'm not going to create a pi object. I'm going to create a pi string. And calling the constructor on this will allow me to pass in a specific string. So I want to say that is what we want. It's essentially a wrapper around a string which we can pass through to that script. In terms of actually adding this on, we actually want to add this as part of an array, an array of pi object. Because if we look at pi string, we can see that eventually we can we can see the, the levels of inheritance for that object. Going down through them, pi sequence to pi iterable it is eventually a pi object. So a pi string is a pi object. So for this, I'm going to pass in our array, initializing it as we pass it in. So I'll say new pi object, and then I'm going to put in that array of pi object message. So obviously, if we had three arguments, then we would say message, comma, another pi object, comma, another pi object. So we're expecting that this will pass that through and it will use it here, appending it to the directory that's found using the OS library. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and we're going to see what it does. Step over that and you can see there's the result. We've got message from Nick, which is what we passed in, and then the directory that it's found, the current working directory, which is my demo console bin folder. So I hope you found this useful. There is a lot more to python.net, things like importing dependencies directly into .NET itself and other things like writing code on the fly, Python code, and then executing it. This video is really focusing on just targeting a script, an introduction to Python.NET as well. Uh, but who knows, maybe I'll do some more videos on the interoperability between C Sharp and Python. But until then, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And I will see you again soon for some more great .NET content. Thank you.